probably thinking, what the heck, Japan. <laughs> so, so talk to me. What did you guys see that was super flat about that? Yeah, just yell. Just yell. Yeah, you, there is a little bit of pirate versus Those lower. Yes, a lot of a lot of patterns. In there. I'll, I'll call on you. It may be a little easier. The yeah, the childishness. She's really cute, but also there are like organs and like skeletons and eyes, and her head turn into an amorphous, terrifying blob. It's a very innocent song. It has all this disturbing imagery. Yeah, the song itself is actually pretty straightforward. It's about like going on a trip with friends or something. It's like not actually that bad. And then she's just like going crazy in her room. Um, if you are wondering about the, the the clapping and the and the bread. Pan is the automatopoeia for clapping, and pan also means bread in Japanese. It's a joke. I, didn't, I had to look it up because I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> um, again, there's bright colors. It was, it was cute and unsettling simultaneously. There's also a lot of Western influence. If you notice Lisa Frank, and if you notice the random Kraft mac and cheese box. Yeah. 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 As you did notice that. Points for you. You have a good eye. <laughs> yeah, there were little figurines and stuff. Yeah, and so it's about, also literally she had piles of stuff, like consumers and culture go, you know, like, that's, that's the whole point. Um, and so, yeah, that's, you can sort of see, like, what Superflat is about from actually Kiati. Um So finally, we'll get, we've gotten to Monica. Um, let's talk about how Superflat is in Monica. The first thing is that Madoka is often called a subversion of a magical girl anime, and magical girl animes are about as cute and lowly and kawaii as you can get, right? You've got these little adorable girls who do adorable <coughs> transformations, and they fight evil, and they save the day, and nothing bad ever happens to them, ever! And, um, so, so, um, it, so Monica is a, like a nightmare fuel show featuring like young girls, and so it's about again that sort of taking something that's cute and innocent and punching through those darker um, emotions to try to, to try to communicate because there's really no other way left. Um, and there's also Cubey. Cubey is a super super is a very super flat character. He's really cutely designed. He seems like at first he's a ha the mascot character that you know what to expect. And then he just kind of stares and stares and stares, <laughs> and he can like get into your head and read your mind. And then all, you know, not to mention all the other horrible things that happen with Kibe later on. So at, at first, he is not what he seems at first, right? And also that he's cute and creepy as hell. <laughs> so and also has a lot of specific references to super flat pieces, and this is the part I'm most interested in, and we'll get to those in just a second. But first, I wanted to talk to you about the witches because they're the best example of how super flat is expressed through Madoka. And that makes sense. The, the witches' barriers are brightly colored areas where art explodes into everyday reality, and the characters get literally get lost in art. Right? They get, they get sucked into this fantastical world where nothing is as it seems. Everything things may start out cute and then become horrifying. Um, and the line between art and reality is further blurred because they use both um, animation and live action video and photography in the witches' barriers. And that makes sense, right? Because the witches themselves are subversions. They're of magical girls, where they start out really cute magical girls, and then they um, fall into despair, and it's like stripping away everything about the magical girl until she becomes a witch. Um, she becomes a, a pure expression of rage or jealousy or obsession, if you're talking about Sayaka, or other things like that. Um, and that's what Superflat is about. It's all about peeling back and seeing what's underneath. So, I wanted to show you some of the witch's barriers. I'm going to go over there again and yell. <laughs> now, this first one, this is the very first image you really see about her, right? This is besides the curtains opening. You start with this, and if you look at it, it's black and white. But it looks pretty flat. There's not a lot of shading, but it has depth. It's super flat. This is how Monica tries to tell you from the very first <coughs> shot of the anime that this is a super flat work, which I thought was pretty cool. This one is Charlotte, who um, you, you probably know. And so I just wanted to show you that it's really cute, again, with a really bright coloration. And it uses live action, um, it uses live action because there's photos, it's photos of scissors and photos of strawberries interjected with cute animation. So that makes it weird and kind of jarring that that collision between reality and animation and art. And this one is um, I'm oh, sorry, whoa, it's uh, Perkis Not. When Perkis Not shows up, it is literally the worst and most terrifying witch in the series is heralded by a children's circus. So again, you get that, that, that mashup of things that are cute and things that are terrifying. Um, to further illustrate my point, I wanted to show you some videos. Um, these, if, again, if you haven't seen uh, Monica and you haven't already seen 50,000 spoilers from this panel, <laughs> then uh, these are pretty spoilery and also vaguely nightmare fuelish, in my opinion. 
But again, if you've seen Monica, you've seen these before. This is the very first, which this is um, Gertrude. And um, try to, throughout this, try to, again, see what's super flat about it, what you can pick out. And here we go.
So, what did you guys notice? Um, you in the boat. With the curvy alligators, it's almost like it's strings, it's kind of turning that into the art world. Yeah. It loves anime and manga, right? So, using mirror reflections of, and of art, of that kind of art style. Yeah. By Rose. One of my favorite points about this particular clip is that Monica, who is depressed and giving into despair, is drawn really, really flat in the beginning of the of the of the clip. And then when Sayaka comes, shows up and gives her hope, she pops back into the normal animation style, which I thought was cool. There's also the, the opening into the art world earlier. Um, purple guy. <laughs> <laughs> um, that when she's being basically drawn and quartered, um, that it's it's okay, right? Because she's just a cartoon. It's not, she's still in that super artistic style, so it's. Um, but if that were more realistic, that would be really terrifying. And again, that's kind of like the, it looks cute, but is actually really creepy. Yes, Dave. Um, the merry-go-round, they're normally like really cute things, but get really scary looking. Yeah, the, the merry-go-round was creepy, um, and we will talk more about the merry-go-round in a second because the merry-go-round is actually the major reason I picked this clip. <laughs> Um, the idea of sort of a, a character floating alone in space surrounded by like a ring is something you see a lot in the works of this guy called Mamoru Hosoda, who you may know because he did Summer Wars, he did The Girl <coughs> Who Left Her Time, he did the Digimon movie, and he did a new movie recently that I haven't seen yet and I can't say. So I, it's like Wolf Children, I think? Something or okay, something I mean, Wolf Children. Um, so the, the fact that, like, so that image shows up a lot of Superflat. Also, um, Superflat really likes clean white with crazy colors on it. That's like a Superflat thing. But I, I do think that this, the idea of her floating surrounded by a ring is a specific reference to a, to Hosoda, in particular his work. So I wanted to show you an example of it. This is actually a piece called Superflat monogram, and it was commissioned by Louis Vuitton. They asked Murakami to help them redesign their logo, and he asked uh, Mamoru Hosoda to sign on with him because Hosoda loves Superflat. It's in every single one of his pieces, practically. Um, and then they made this piece together. So I'd like to show it to you. Again, keep an eye out for Superflat things.
people are having crazy Summer Wars flashbacks from that. Like everybody? Yeah. So it may interest you to know that Super Flat Monogram was created in 2003. The Girl Who Left Through Time, which is the same image of the ring surrounding a girl, is 2006. Um, Summer Wars is 2009. So these are all ideas that he's played with quite a lot. Um, <laughs> That's full of battery sound. Oh, that's great. Hold on. that um, uh, Murakami really likes and likes to play with. He starts out as this, and he's this really cute, really obvious Mickey Mouse homage. <laughs> um, and, and so the reason he's a Mickey Mouse homage is because um, it is a reference to Disney, but it's also a reference to um, the way that anime and manga kind of started is Osama Tezuka is considered the godfather of anime, and he has Astro Boy, and Astro Boy, if you've ever seen Astro Boy, hopefully you guys aren't actually this young, he has two little spikes on his head, and the spikes are supposed to imitate Mickey Mouse's ears. Osama, uh, oh my god, Osama Tezuka loved Mickey Mouse. And part of the idea also that Mickey Mouse started as, a, as an amazing art, art piece when it first came out, Steve Willie, and now it's a huge uh, multimedia franchise, right? So the idea of what counts as high art, what counts as low art, what counts as um, revolutionary art. So anyway, that's a, that's a loop around of many things that this is referencing at once, but Mr. D.O.B. starts as this, and he starts out really cute, a little creepy, but mostly cute. And he makes many art pieces with Mr. D.O.B., and they get darker and darker until finally it turns into this. <laughs> and that could probably kill somebody. Right, so Mr. D.O.B. Is, is, a, is a cute, happy mascot character who very quickly gets corrupted. And if you have, if, does anybody know the reference that I'm talking about in Monica right now? Do I get to, yeah, okay. So some people know. Yes? Did you, no, you're good? Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, so it's Charlotte, if you guys know Charlotte. Charlotte starts as a cute, innocuous um, character who's actually harmless, like mommy beats, beats her up a lot and she can't really fight back. And then she turns into this and actually kills someone. Um, but if you look at the similarities in design between Mr. D.O.B. and Charlotte, right, they, they're like, oh, there are callbacks, specifically, like the ears, there's the nose, there's like the kind of fixed smile. These are all things that are hallmarks of Mr. D.O.B. that they are very specifically referencing with Charlotte's design that I thought was really cool. This was like the first thing I really noticed in Madoka that made me think like, hey, they're super flat in this, I want to know more. Um, yeah, just so you can see quickly, I guess I had it that way. Anyway, so I want to play a game with you guys, now that you're all like super flat masters. <laughs> so it's a very simple game. You just tell me if it's super flat or not super flat. Bonus points if you can explain why. Ready? Here we go. Here's the first one. Is it super flat or not? This one's easy. I'm giving it to you. Just yell. Yes, it's super flat. Why? Raise hands. Uh, Dave, I keep calling my name. <laughs> Yeah, 
It's, uh, it's really cute and um, also kind of creepy. Also that if you look at, I'm just gonna talk, I'm running out of time, sorry. <laughs> if you look at the art style, it looks really obviously drawn, but it's a sculpture. It's literally art sitting in the three-dimensional world. Um, it's really brightly colored. It's got those fixed stairs that we keep talking about. It's really cute and also kind of disturbing. Um, what the heck is with the hands in the middle of the art piece? I don't even understand. <laughs> like, um, what about this one? Super flat or not? No, right? The first panel I gave this to you thought it was. Oh. <laughs> so, which, you know, that's the point. The point is that, well, maybe. The, this is actually called Neo Dadaism. This is a piece by Robert Rauschenberg called Riding Bikes. It's from Berlin, Germany, and it was created in 1998. And what it's talking about is, the reason I show it is because like super flat artists, he's interested in the intersection between art and reality. Why isn't this art? Why can't we call two bikes side by side covered in neon lights art? Sure. Um, the idea also of mass reproduction, it's, it's mirror images, stamps of the same image over and over, and again, those bright colors. And I didn't mention for the first piece, but I just wanted to mention that this is a Murakami work, and it should probably look really similar to super flat monogram, which is why I picked it. <laughs> um, this is called Double Helix Reversal, it's from 2003, and this is actually showed in Rockefeller Center. He had an ex exhibition there, and I'm really sad I didn't know about Superflat, because I would have gone. What about this one? Is it Superflat or not? See, for me, I'm just like, question mark? Like, maybe? Because again, Superflat does come from anime and manga, right? It, I ultimately know, I don't think it is. But this is a screenshot from Lucky Star, in case anybody didn't know that. Um, but it, it, Super Flat takes a lot from shows like Lucky Star that are brightly colored and um, lonely anime with huge eyes that use a lot, uh, that's pretty self aware of the tropes it uses. So that's why I showed this one. What about this one? Super Flat? Yes. 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 This is by Aya Takano. This is called Wide Version Shopping. It's from 2006. And again, you get those large eyes, you get the childlike figures, you get the bright colors, and you get consumerism because they're shopping. But at the same time, there's like evil dogs in the back eating chickens and a girl who's shooting death lasers from her eyes? Just like, oh, what happened in the back? Um, and so you get this ominous background that still kind of veers towards cuteness. Also the way that if you look in the background of the shop, it breaks down to shapes, which is kind of cubism, if you guys know your high art stuff. Last one, guys. What about this one? No. No. This is pop art. This is a really famous piece, actually. This is called The Wham. It is by Robert Lichtenstein, and it was created in 1963. But it, pop art isn't, super flat is not pop art, and Murakami is really adamant about that. But at the same time, you can see it comes kind of comes from this. This is literally a comic that has been turned into high art. That is exactly what super flat does for manga and anime. And it uses the bright colors and also the idea of mass media reproduction of comic book images. So I didn't get to fool you guys even once. You guys are good. Yeah, you guys are right. So yeah, any questions or anything? That's it, I'm sorry. But I wanted to say, if you thought this was really cool and you want to know more, here are some things you can read. So the first one is this book called um, Otaku, Japan's Database Animals by Hiroki Azuma. And this is a great book. If you're interested in anime as sort of a, a more academic discussion like we had here, this is a really good one to read. It's all about postmodernism, not super flat exactly, but it's a lot of the same ideas. The second one is called Takashi Murakami, The Meaning of the Nonsense of the Meaning by Amanda Cruz. Murakami work, it's really good. The last one is called Little Boy, The Arts of Japan's Exploding Subculture by, ha and by Murakami edited this piece. If you've gone to Kinokuniya and you see the book with Shinji floating in the middle of no like nothingness on the cover, that's this book. It's not, again, not exactly super flat, but it talks about things that Murakami finds interesting in manga and art, and it's really cool. So I hope that you've learned something. I, thought th I hope this is a fun panel for you guys. And that you, you know, thank you so much for coming. If you want to like hang out and talk, any questions or you want to talk or anything, you can just come up or yell or we're all good. That was an hour. <laughs>